Oh, hello. Welcome to CNET's live coverage of Samsung's Unpacked event. Today we're expecting the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, the S22 Plus, and the regular S22. We could also be seeing some new tablets. I'm Aya Zaktar, along with my pals Bridget Carey and Lexi Civides. Let's give you a rundown of today's plan. We'll go over what to expect at the event, then we'll stream Unpacked Live. That event is also somehow taking place in the metaverse. We'll talk about that in a bit. After that, it's back here for our post show, where we'll talk about everything we saw, including that metaverse presentation. If you guys have any questions or comments about what's coming up from Samsung, let us know. Tweet us with the hashtag CNETLive. All right, so let's start off with Samsung's official teaser. Beach, can we get that thing running? It's not that subtle. Uh, we're going to take a look at it and talk over it. All right, so we're starting off. We've got our two phones. They're dancing over the sand. They're causing up uh, some dust kicking up, and then they're going to slam together and become one. Lex, do you think this uh, means anything? I have exclusive access to the two phones that were used in that presentation, and uh, I'd like to do my own demonstration of that and reenact it live for you here on the show. Um, so I have Galaxy S21 Ultra and a Note 20 Ultra, and I'm going to smash them together right in a circle and ready to... I, I just can't. I, I can't. I as I can't do it. I refuse. I refuse to make the, them to merge. I'm not. I'm not ready for it. I know. I know a lot of people are ready for this potential new design on the Galaxy S22 Ultra, but I don't know. There's something about the Note that I'm just not ready to let go of. Anyway, that was completely not the question you asked me. Um, so maybe we should move to Bridget to to get her thoughts on the teaser. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Lexi, we're all ready for this. We, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. I'll talk you through it. But we, it is time to clean things up with Samsung. There are too many different types of variations and spinoffs. And and now we're finally getting, I'm, I'm going to say it, this, this, this theme is about stability. That's what we all need right now, right? Now you can go in, according to all these rumors, and like be able to go, okay, I got, I got everything S22, all the top of the line ones. Now they have stylus. This is it. This is something that stands apart from, from the iPhone. Great. I know what I want to get. Maybe three models. Great. And then you know what? Later in the year, that's when we save it for the wild stuff. That's when we save it for the flipping and the folding. So you have two different sets of time to get your Samsung phones, not like a bunch all over the map. That's all. Just want to put that. If you guys have no idea what we're talking about, it looks like that the Note is going to be replaced by the S22 Ultra. Uh, that that was the official teaser there. We're going to start showing you images that are not official. These were leaked by Evan Blast. They look official, uh, but they're th this has been leaked since November. We've seen photos and photos and photos of this device. It looks much more like the Note 20. This is supposedly the S22 Ultra, again, leaked by Evan Blast. You're going to see Italian text because that's what he sent out. Uh, and you're looking at a device that flat out it looks like the Note. Okay, you got these squarish corners. You got these massive cameras on the back. You've got the hole punch camera there. Um, Lex, I know you're a huge Note fan, as am I. Do you think it's too early to kill the Note? I think we had a very clear indication that the Note was pretty much dead last year when we didn't get a refresh to the Note 20 uh, because Samsung moved their naming conventions two years. So it went Note 10 Plus and then all of a sudden it went Note 20 because it was released in 2020. We didn't get a Note 21 Ultra, um, as Bridget alluded to, that we saw the Fold and the Flip instead released in the September timeframe. And I think that was really when the warning bells started to go off. And Samsung, of course, did come out last year and said there won't be a new Note but not necessarily that it's it's not necessarily dead, but I think we've seen um, Samsung definitely getting us used to having things like the S Pen integration in the S21 Ultra, even though it's not wasn't necessarily in the phone itself. Uh, and then of course the S Pen integration with the Z Fold 3 and the Z Flip 3 as well. So I think it's an inevitable. I am not happy about it though. Uh, as a long-term Note fan, I, I thought maybe, look, this is just me. Maybe it's just me that's getting upset about it. I did run a very official, unofficial poll on my Instagram story saying Team Note or Team Galaxy S. The vote is 65% Galaxy Note and 35% Galaxy S. So uh, take that, you know, with whatever grain of salt or as an official as you want to make it. But I think there are a lot of really hardcore note fans out there that might be upset at least i know i'm going to be upset for a good 10 minutes until i get my hands on the s22 ultra and then i'll probably forget all about the note i hope not though because i love the yeah. note 
I think one of the big things that people were, were complaining about in the past was if they're going to replace the note, you better make it like the note. This pen better go into the device. And in the leaks we've shown you and the leaks we've seen, it looks like the pen will actually be housed in the device. This will be the first S device that can house a pen because the S21 Ultra was the first S to use the S pen, but it didn't have a place like a location to house it. So if they're going to kill the note, this device better do as, as much as the old note did because you don't have to carry that extra pen. It seems like Samsung is really banking on the idea of stylus for all, pens for all, except maybe not the S22 and S22 Plus, but we'll get to that later. Bridget, do you think that this move will sell more S devices? Because from what I read last year, when Samsung decided to skip the Note 21, it apparently didn't help sales of the S. Oh, I think absolutely it'll sell more. Um, you know, people who, who have been in iPhone land have had to deal with a lot of crazy names. We had S's and pluses and, and pros and, you know, Samsung could use a little cleaning up right now. And when you look at everything, you got ultra plus, and then just S 22, nice and easy. What do you want? Do you want your stylus? Do you don't want your stylus? Make a decision right then and there. And people are going to want to go, Ooh, I want, I want everything. Although it is something that's obviously going to be pretty pricey. Um, and, and if you look at the the leaked information, they're also going to have tablets out today with the same naming pattern. I like it. I like it, Bias. I want something clean and easy. And you know what I like? I like that a new flagship phone is coming out right with like you're showing off. You want the you want the best. You want the stylus. Good. Something different because I'm bored with phones. I want different things. I like it. I like I, I like it. Go to the tablets in a little bit because there's a, there's apparently every like everything seems to have leaked. Amazon Italy apparently published a whole bunch of stuff that looked like the official Samsung information. But again, we'll get to that in a little bit. I want to still talk a little bit more about the S22 Ultra because the looks of the teasers and that image we showed you about the super clear glass and all those cameras on the back of the Ultra. It looks like night vision photography is going to be a really big deal. Bridget, what do you think a camera needs to do in 2022 on a phone to stand out? I I definitely enjoy all these leaks showing, you know, take galaxy photos on your galaxy. Mm, about time, maybe. Um, no, we always see all this. Like, for, for the past couple years now, there is just a battle over who could take the best pictures of space at night. We saw space zoom before with Samsung. But really, like, like with the Pixel phones, with iPhones, we just see it over and over again. Perhaps you might even call it a star war of, be, between phone carriers and, and how good they are at taking photos. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a nerd. I couldn't help it. Um, but <laughs> nevertheless, I do think that people are looking for, I'm sorry, we people are looking for something to say, well, why am I going to upgrade? Why am I going to spend all this? So we're going to have to hear about not, not just how good that camera is at taking the night sky, but also, um, you know, action shots at night. I like to see more information on, cause I'm not always, you know, taking pictures of the stars, you know, I got better things to do sometimes. Um, but, and, and, and how responsive it is in general. So yeah, these, these phones are getting expensive. Wow me and give me something to wow my friends with. Talk a little bit about the S Pen. It's supposed to be super fast, according to a leak on Twitter. Now, this S Pen could feature a latency of 2.8 milliseconds. That would put the S22 Ultra in the same latency as the Galaxy Z Fold 3. Lexi, do you think a faster S Pen experience is something people want or even know that they want? I don't think it's uh, on the wish list of most people who are looking for an S Pen device, but it certainly doesn't hurt. And if you start throwing out really small numbers, like 2.8 milliseconds, I think to a lot of people, it, it's like, that sounds good. That sounds exciting. The S Pen integration, you know, on the Note and then later on the Z Fold 3, I think earlier I misspoke, I said it was Z Flip 3 as well. It's not Z Fold 3. Um, that was already incredibly seamless. Uh, still, I, to me, the, the feeling of the, the S Pen on the Fold, because the latency is great, it wasn't necessarily that. It was sort of the texture of the front screen, uh, the, the crease didn't necessarily lend itself to the same S Pen experience that I was used to on the Note and, of course, the S21 Ultra uh, from last year. But I think, you know, having the S Pen latency reduced is a positive. Again, it was still pretty, pretty good. So I'm looking forward to actually trying this out and seeing if, you know, necessarily the numbers correlate to the experience. I actually did a comparison of the S Pen on the Note 20 Ultra um, and the Note 10 Plus a couple years ago because, again, Every year, the latency is reduced. Side by side, honestly, I could not really feel a difference when I was writing the same phrase out side by side. I, I really felt like it was 
probably all in my head. I was just perceiving that the Note 20 Ultra was like a little bit more uh, responsive. But I think in actuality, when I did film the two side by side, I really couldn't notice that much of a difference when I was reviewing it. Look, it's a good thing it's reduced, um, but are most people going to notice? Probably not because it's still, it's pretty good as it is. We got a lot more to talk about, and there's about five minutes from now that the show is going to start. So let's run through this stuff fast. We got the S22 Plus. Now this thing looks a lot more familiar. If you know what an S phone looks like, it's got a 6.6 inch screen. It'd be smaller and thinner, much more rounded corners. This is what an S normally looks like. Here's the S22 Plus. The display apparently is bonkers. 100, one, sorry, 1300 nits, which is more than the iPhone 13 Pro Max's 1200 nits max brightness. So this device looks pretty good. I'm going to just jump ahead to the S22 as well. S22 is supposed to basically have the same specs completely, except for the size, of course. It'd be slightly smaller. I believe a 6.1 inch screen. Uh, same camera systems. The display would have the same max brightness. The one thing it doesn't have that the Plus does, other than screen size and probably a battery change, is that it maxes out at 25 watts when it comes to charging. The other two max out at 45. Bridget, the S22 sounds like a very capable, nice phone. Do you think this thing is getting like overshadowed at this point? Because you got the, you got the plus, you got the ultra. There's the FE. So where's the regular one fit in? Oh, I, I feel like that's always a problem with Samsung, but this is a little bit um, easier to swallow this time because uh, at least you know if you're going to go all the way, and I'm sure there's going to be a high price tag on on uh, the ultra. Um, you can at least go. All right, am I the kind of person who needs a stylus or not? Um, and I am curious because I have this problem too when it comes to Apple devices. They always, you know, give you everything in the top of the line one, but maybe you don't need everything. So there there, there is there there is a space for for all these different types of consumers here in this lineup. I, I know we just get really into like what does the best one have? Well I like the best one because you can hang on to it longer. Like I'm sticking to my note twenty until until it dies. I'm going to wait. Unless it falls like my Note 8 did miraculously on the day before the introduction of the Note 20. Mine fell, took a face plant on diamond plate and broke. So I'm like, ah, it's a sign. A sign to buy new stuff. Uh, let's talk about tablets real quick. We got the Samsung Tab S8 Ultra. Again, these are leaked images. These are not official yet. This thing is a monster. It have a 14.6 inch OLED display. If you look at the top edge really, really carefully in landscape, there's a notch for some reason. Uh, I'm not making that up. It is there. There's very thin bezels around it. Uh, it weighs in at 1.6 pounds. For comparison, the heaviest iPad Pro weighs in at 1.5 pounds. But that's got like a measly 12.9 inch screen. This is a 14.6 inch device. Uh, Lexi, I'm really curious what you think about a 14.6 inch Android tablet in this day and age. Look, I think from the specs and from all of the leaked material that we've seen, all of this is speculation and rumor, by the way, as we've been talking through. It looks fantastic. But what is the market there for a 14 inch tablet? I'm not really sure. What is the market for people that are looking for something that is kind of iPad Pro equivalent because we've, we've had the iPad Pro for many, many years. And I feel like most people who have been looking for a really high powered tablet first and then potentially adding on with other accessories like a stylus and a keyboard later, um, we've already got such a competent device on the iOS side. It's about time that we get something on the Android side, but whether or not it's enough to sway people to actually open their wallet uh, and, and fork over for such a capable device, I'm not really sure. I, I think it looks fantastic. The specs uh, I'm really, really excited about. But again, I, I just don't really know the market for, for a 14-inch Android tablet these days. I mean, I'm not a tablet person. Uh, I will happily and very easily admit that, but uh, I, I just don't know who's going to buy this. There was another leaked report that said that Samsung is going to support their tablets and these phones up to four Android cycles. That would be a huge thing because I think when it comes to Apple devices, those things are supported for, it seems like, forever. And for Samsung to be like, hey, our tablets, this is unofficial. They're going to be around for a while. This could be a big deal. It looks like the event's about to start. I'm seeing it uh, pop up. They have their big... Galaxy February 22 and a bunch of little text. I can't really read it. Uh, we're going to go to that stream, and we're also going to see that in the metaverse. We're going to take you there live. Don't forget, we're going to be back with our post show to recap and analyze all the news. Remember to tweet out your thoughts and questions with the hashtag CNETLive. Let's, let's take you to the event that's got the little teeny tiny text, or should we wait on that? It's just sitting there. I, mean, I think you, you should just... read the teeny tiny text, Diaz. I, I, I cannot read the teeny tiny text. 
<laughs> I'm gonna need Hi. my bifocals Nigel. right now. Okay, let's let's try it. It says this presentation slash broadcast and its contents are the sole property. Oh, it says S now. I guess I gotta stop talking. Let's go to the unpacked. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us. This is an unpack like no other. After two years of unprecedented challenges, our world has changed. As have our ways of living, working, connecting with one another, our personal values, even our responsibilities to each other and to society. In our new world, Technology has helped in ways we never expected, enriching human connection, creating positive change, and helping all of us build a better world today and for the future. We believe that technological progress and social progress are intertwined. Over the years, Samsung has put billions of devices in the hands of users all around the world. And we know our global scale and our spirit of openness give us a unique responsibility to use our reach to make the biggest impact possible and to help the next generation of leaders and problem solvers make the world a better place. Last year, we launched Galaxy for the Planet, our new sustainability vision. As part of Galaxy for the Planet, Samsung is taking strong actions across our business. We are building energy-saving technologies into chargers, diverting waste from landfills, and minimizing the plastics in our packaging. We are making product life cycles longer to reduce and reuse materials. And soon, you will hear more about how we are innovating with the recycled debris. Every single product we announce today uses reclaimed ocean-bound plastics, helping to protect our precious oceans while bringing you the cutting-edge technology you expect from Samsung. This is all part of our journey to help create a better future. And the best part is, we are not on this journey alone. We are following the roadmap to the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals, the global goals. And to be clear, these are not just the UN's goals. They are yours. They are ours. They belong to the whole world. And the whole world is counting on each of us to help meet them. That's why Samsung's partnership with the United Nations Development Program is so vital. For more about this inspiring partnership, I am pleased to introduce Ahim Steiner, Administrator of UNDP. Over to you, Ahim. Thank you, TM. And on behalf of the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, I'm honored to join you and millions of others today. We're all at a critical moment in our pursuit to achieve the global goals. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought unprecedented challenges to our society and the planet. And for the first time in 30 years, we've witnessed a reversal in global human development. That's why it is more important than ever to come together to take collective action towards a greener, more resilient future for all. If there is one thing the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us, it is how connected to the planet and to each other we all are. It is clear that technology is a driving force behind forging those connections, not only in our daily lives, but also in helping to shape our collective future. Technology can help us build back better from crisis and even enable us as a society to be better equipped to propel progress. It is with those innovative principles in mind that we have founded a strong partnership upon which we can build even further. With Samsung, we created the Samsung Global Goals app, now installed on nearly 200 million mobile devices worldwide. 
Together, we've inspired people throughout the world to learn about the global goals and take action to achieve them. The scale and impact that has been made possible through partnerships like our collaboration with Samsung is informing the next generation of UNDP's own Digital Strategy 2.0. And through Generation 17, we are working to highlight the critical importance of youth in achieving the global goals. Young people are often directly exposed to the effects of climate change, conflict, exclusion, and economic instability. In many parts of the world, it is still difficult for young people to be heard and to influence decision-making processes. Yet, youth represent our best hope for positive change at the front lines, in our communities, and on the global stage. That is why we must find ways to empower young leaders and practitioners who are mobilizing their generation, the largest in history and now some 1.8 billion strong, to tip the balance in the right direction at this pivotal moment. Today, we are pleased to introduce the next generation 17 young leaders and set the stage for them to share their stories of change. These inspiring advocates are reminding us of the urgency to step up our efforts on education, inclusion, climate and more as we also focus on improved resilience in the face of crisis. Thank you, Samsung, for your impactful partnership. Here at UNDP, we are proud to continue our work together to further the global goals, building a brighter, more sustainable, and more inclusive future for all. Thank you so much, Ahim. We are proud of this work and these young leaders. They embody the true spirit of open innovation. In our new world, technology should serve everyone, enabling progress for each of us and for all of us, with the freedom to choose and customize what works for you, with the best-in-class security and with the control over your privacy. All powered by open partnerships that push the whole industry forward sustain a robust ecosystem, and deliver the very best experience for every user, every day, everywhere on the planet. This is Samsung's continued mission to connect people everywhere. We don't just operate globally, we innovate globally too. At 22 R&D hubs and eight manufacturing centers that serve every continent. This global mindset informs everything we do and shapes every new galaxy technology so we can stay ahead of a changing world, understand what users want and need around the globe, and open the future for you today. In just a moment, you will get the first glimpse of that future, a high-performance tool for creating contents that has an impact with advanced video capturing, editing, and sharing capabilities. It's the ultimate smartphone to rewrite the rules of innovation, to make your everyday epic. And it will empower more people from more places to join in building a more inclusive future. That future begins right now as we open the door to a new world of innovation. Welcome to Samsung Galaxy Unpack. The season's inventor's ball at the palace is a highly sought after invitation where the most innovative minds try to gain the queen's attention. Lord Macintosh. Your Highness, I give you the raincoat. Next, Lord Trister. Your Highness, I give you the Samsung Galaxy S22. What is it? It is a correspondence device that produces moving pictures. It is beautiful.
We need better lighting. Douse the curtains. Make them gleam and shimmer. What are those circles? The large sensor camera. Bring them close. Closer. What do they do? It captures exceptional night shots with image stabilization. I have no idea what that means. Nor do I. Rotate them around me. Faster! That is how to present machines of such art. And when will you present the finished product to the court? Shortly. About 210 years, Your Highness. 209? The Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus are here. We created these smartphones for people who want to transform ordinary moments into extraordinary experiences. Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus are based on the iconic S series design. When you look at these devices from the side, you can see a flat, elegant profile that creates an aesthetic, balanced effect. These smartphones also have a dynamic and charming color palette and are available in four stylish shades. Today, a lot of us express ourselves through visuals. So with the Galaxy S22 series, we set out to take that creation to a whole new level, starting with your smartphone camera. Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus bring you pro-grade camera quality across multiple lenses. A new 50 megapixel wide lens provides enhanced resolution, and its larger sensor lets in more light, so everyone will look great, day or night. There's also a new 10 megapixel tele lens with three times optical zoom, which means you can travel light and still take brilliant shots. The Galaxy S22 series helps you take great photos and incredible videos, like when you're looking at a beautiful skyline. If the sun is behind you, backlighting can make it difficult to capture a great shot. But with Super HDR on your S22, you can capture once in a lifetime moments in well-defined videos even with backlighting. Look at the difference. This camera sets a new standard for smartphones. Let me show you what I mean. I love walking around New York City. There's a new adventure around every corner and there's always so much to see. When I see something inspiring, I just have to stop and capture the moment. Even when I'm on the move, my video is stable. That's because of a 58% wider correction angle of optical image stabilization and video digital image stabilization, which analyzes four times more motion data than before. When you're ready for a night out, you always want to look your best. The Galaxy S22 can snap amazing selfies. The front camera takes great portraits, even in low light, and the results are bright and clear. You can impress your followers or even film a submission for an upcoming audition. AI Stereo Depth Map is now integrated into portrait mode on the Galaxy S22 series. Without AI Stereo Depth Map, smartphone cameras often can't identify and process thin objects, like a straw. But with the S22, the AI will not only allow you to focus on precisely what you care about, it can also correctly interpret what should be vivid in your image with improved object segmentation. All of that sounds pretty amazing, right? We know that your camera is super important to your social life and your social media. We partnered with Snap to provide a more integrated camera experience with the Galaxy S22 series. 
Now you can take advantage of S22's smooth zoom with telelens and night mode, all right from the Snapchat app. And look how the camera makes the subject really stand out from the background, even for portrait video. AI autofocus, BDIS and Super HDR enhance that experience even further, providing masterful shots from different angles and in different lighting conditions. And all of that tech is integrated with the in-app camera of your favorite social app, so you can capture gorgeous videos straight from Instagram, Snapchat and TikTok. Look how easily you can share files and photos with QuickShare. It's so fun looking back at all the shots captured during the day. Getting live feedback has never been so easy. With Google Duo, you can provide instant feedback while watching a video together. Night or day, snowfall or sunlight, the Galaxy S22 series will take your daily life to the next level and make it more epic than ever. One, two, three. The Galaxy S22 series breaks the rules of every category. It sets a new standard across the mobile industry, offering up impressive innovations at every turn and elevating everyday moments and memories into epic experiences. With a new 50 megapixel wide lens with a larger sensor and a new 10 megapixel tele lens with three times optical zoom, you'll get brilliant lifelike shots. This camera also pushes the boundaries of videography. Galaxy S22 will be available for $799 and S22 Plus will be available for $999. You can pre-order both starting today. You can get even more color options exclusively at samsung.com. And the Galaxy S22 series comes with so many accessories to fit your needs. We're sure you'll find one that you'll love. We look forward to seeing all of the amazing things you do with your Galaxy S22 series. Here at Samsung, we're constantly pushing the boundaries of our industry and what technology can do for you. Life is full of possibilities, and with Galaxy, you can make the most of them every single day. We're committed to delivering experiences that empower you to make every day epic. We're bringing you an ultra smartphone powered by Galaxy Note. Meet the Galaxy S22 Ultra. It breaks the rules of mobile innovation and is truly a leap forward in mobile technology. The Galaxy S22 Ultra is simple and striking, taking its cues from the iconic design of the Galaxy Note. We seamlessly integrated the camera lenses into the phone. Its mirrored metal frame is symmetrical, giving off a real sense of balance. And it comes in four bold classic colors, Phantom Black, 
phantom white, green, and a sophisticated all-new burgundy. Last year, we opened up a new world of possibilities for the S-Series, making the Galaxy S21 Ultra compatible with the S-Pen. And today, we're thrilled to introduce the first Galaxy S-Series model ever with a built-in S-Pen. Our engineers and developers ingeniously fit this pin into the hardware itself, all while maintaining high performance. The S Pen helps you work and create more efficiently and with more detail than ever. Compared to the Galaxy Note 20 and the S21 Ultra, we made this display three times more responsive to the S Pen, not only by making hardware improvements, but by leveraging AI too. Based on extensive analysis, we enhanced our AI-based point prediction software. Now, Galaxy S22 Ultra can better predict the next point of your S Pen, so your writing and drawing will be smoother than ever. We continuously work with our strategic partners to bring you even more integrated experiences with the S Pen. Like with Microsoft, you can enjoy a rich editing experience in Outlook. When you're responding to a long email, for example, S Pen can select a specific line and reply to that one request, making it easier to get your point across. From the seamless design to the embedded S Pen, we used our highest quality materials to create the Galaxy S22 series, including our strongest armor aluminum frame yet and Corning Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. Gorilla Glass Victus Plus is on both the front and back of the device and is currently exclusive to the Galaxy S22 series. These materials protect the device, including the most frequently used part of any smartphone, the display. With the Galaxy S22 Ultra, we're bringing you an immersive 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display with adaptive refresh rate. It can reach up to 120 Hertz for super smooth scrolling on social media and optimized viewing for video and games, and go as low as one Hertz to save energy when you're doing something less intensive, like looking at a photo in your gallery. But what if you're out under the sun? You try to use your smartphone, but you just can't see your screen. And we've developed a new algorithm to tackle this display challenge head on. Let's take a closer look. Introducing Vision Booster. Galaxy S22 Ultra screen has a peak brightness of 1750 nits. But simply making the screen brighter isn't enough, and it can sometimes result in a loss of details. Vision Booster is a unique solution that significantly improves display visibility by considering the light intensity of the surroundings and its influence on the display. Vision Booster's algorithm analyzes the histogram data of all content appearing on the display, inspecting each pixel's value. Then, it performs tone mapping to adjust the display, making dark areas brighter and colors richer, maximizing color contrast for a sharper picture, even under direct sunlight. You'll see a tangible increase in viewing quality Vision Booster will help enhance your display, whatever lighting conditions you're faced with. It's the result of a balanced alliance between optimized hardware and intelligent software that automatically adapt to your ever-changing environment. Thanks to the all-new Vision Booster algorithm, Galaxy S22 Ultra has our most advanced display yet. It enriches the viewing experience, even in bright conditions, including direct sunlight. The core power of any smartphone is in its processor. The Galaxy S22 Ultra comes with a powerful 4 nanometer processor, our fastest chip ever. That means you get phenomenal processing and graphics and peak machine learning performance, which unlocks powerful AI across the Galaxy S22 Ultra experience. And we work to regulate the temperature of the Galaxy S22 while maintaining its powerful performance. Let's take a look. Our smartphones are incredibly powerful. The more powerful the technology, the more energy it requires. And this energy is usually converted to heat. It requires innovations in heat transfer technology 
which is based on the principle of moving energy away from a heat source and spreading it out to maintain a control temperature. Galaxy S22 Ultra is equipped with an all-new structure made with new materials that deliver optimized heat dissipation. To make this possible, we improved each part of our heat solution. Starting with the thermal interface material, a substance that improves heat transfer between surfaces. Our latest TIM was developed using a new, thicker type of gel to conduct heat faster. We call it the gel tim. Above the gel tim is the nano tim, which shields electromagnetic interference from the AP. It's made with a new flexible nanofiber material, which is more resistant under pressure when compared to the solid metal used in previous models. The new nano tim is not only more effective, but also moves heat faster to the vapor chamber. The vapor chamber, or VC, acts as a powerful thermal spreader. In the past, the VC rested on the PCB. But, as smartphone batteries became bigger, the PCB got smaller. So our engineers had to find a different location for the VC to maximize heat diffusion. The new vapor chamber is designed to cover the area from the AP to the battery, enabling a more efficient heat transfer. It's made of a new, double-bonded stainless steel that's pressed in a way that allows the VC to stay thin and cover more area, while also being more durable under pressure. From the vapor chamber, the heat moves to the graphite spreading sheet, which diffuses heat horizontally away from the vapor chamber. The improvements made to each part of our heat solution, combined with our thermal management software, which optimizes each operation to control heat, enable the Galaxy S22 Ultra to rapidly dissipate heat, effectively cooling your phone. Freedom without limitations. Samsung is always pursuing that goal. And with the Galaxy S22 Ultra, we're one step closer. The Galaxy S22 Ultra is full of pioneering technology that can help you explore the world your way and capture all the incredible things you encounter along the way. To tell you more about the Galaxy S22 Ultra's camera experience, please welcome Wan Jun Choi. Thank you, Drew. We have made incredible progress in mobile camera technology over the past decade. And we did it all for our creative consumers like you because we believe that everyone should be able to share their unique point of view with the world. And that all starts with the Galaxy camera experience, one that is always evolving to match your ever-changing needs. As cameras evolved and became more central to the smartphone experience, the industry raced to achieve maximum resolution. We all pushed forward to improve the quality of photos and videos, without sacrificing the size and form factor of a smartphone. And Samsung ran ahead of the pack, introducing an 8K video and a 108 megapixel photo camera in a device that fits in your pocket. This camera produced a vivid 108 megapixel image using a re-mosaic algorithm to remap pixels into a conventional RGB pattern. Now, the Galaxy S22 Ultra's camera uses adaptive pixels to merge multiple frames into one. It combines a detailed 108 megapixel image with a non abining 12 megapixel image with a more light. This combination creates an optimally bright 108 megapixel image, providing crisp resolution throughout the day. But of course, the camera experience isn't only about resolution. We know that photographers enjoy switching between different lenses to capture different focal lengths. Our designers and engineers combined powerful software with a powerful hardware to introduce a quadruple lens camera with 100 times space zoom, setting yet another industry standard, expanding the kind of content you can create and putting the creative power firmly in your hands. And today, Samsung is elevating the camera experience once again with the Galaxy S22 Ultra, our most powerful AI camera yet. At the heart of our innovation is the AI engine, a neural processing unit capable of deep learning. 
Deep learning powers some incredible backend technologies that use intelligence to elevate image quality. Like our detail enhancer, which renders objects or scenes it recognizes with a more accuracy. Amazing things happen any time of the day, but the lighting isn't always ideal, like in the evening. So we made it our mission to help you capture your favorite moments, whether you are shooting by day or in the dark of night. Introducing Nightography. Lure Blue, that brief moment when the sun is about to set, known as the blue hour. It's a beautiful moment that many of us try to capture, but struggle to, because low light environments present a challenge for most smartphone cameras. To capture a clear image in a dim setting, enough light must reach and be absorbed by the camera's image sensor. Galaxy S22 Ultra is equipped with a 2.4 micrometer large pixel sensor that takes in more light and has an anti-reflective nano coating on the glass and lens. So that light can travel to the image sensor with fewer reflections. This allows for crisp photos and videos with minimal flare, even at night. All of these hardware improvements, when combined with optimized software, help deliver incredible nightography found only on Galaxy S22 Ultra. When taking photos in low light, Night Solution kicks in. It uses multi-frame processing to capture a series of images in an instant, removing frames that have noise or blur. Then, it merges the remaining frames into a single clear shot and uses an AI-powered ISP algorithm that enhances the object's true shape, color tone, and details. Night Solution also works with portrait mode, Tele lens with three times optical zoom and the front camera for selfies. That means gorgeous photos of you and your friends, day or night. A video is made up of multiple frames captured in quick succession. In dim environments, a slower shutter speed helps the image sensor capture more light. But this also makes the camera more sensitive to camera shakes, resulting in blurry footage. To provide clear and stable night video, Galaxy S22 Ultra employs an intricate, dual-track image stabilization solution with OIS and VDIS. OIS compensates for camera shakes by physically moving the lens in the opposite direction of the motion. Galaxy S22 Ultra's OIS hardware has a 58% wider corrective angle compared to its predecessors which allows the camera to neutralize larger shakes for smooth recording. VDIS uses software to compensate for the camera's movements across X, Y, and Z coordinates. With four times the motion sampling frequency, VDIS provides faster and more accurate magnitude and direction analysis. Galaxy S22 Ultra combines these two stabilization technologies to more accurately correct distortions. Together, they calculate optimal corrective values and adjust shaky frames one by one, resulting in smooth video, even in low light. To capture brighter videos at night, Galaxy S22 Ultra's camera automatically changes the frame rate between different FPS in response to subtle changes in lighting. That means the lens gets more light, providing optimal exposure. When the frame rate drops below 24 FPS, Super Night Solutions synthesizes up to 12 frames with the best details as you film, bringing you bright and detailed results even in low light. Epic moments happen around the clock. And dim lighting should never hold you back. From the blue hour to the dark of night, Galaxy S22 Ultra helps you capture every moment. With the Galaxy S22 series, we're enabling you to freely create and express yourself through photos and videos, day or night. We're giving you more advanced functions like Pro Mode, it's a truly professional camera experience that even an amateur photographer like myself can take advantage of. In Pro Mode, you can manually adjust your shutter speed, ISO, manual focus, and white balance. 
And with S22, for the first time, Pro Mode gives you the choice to extend these powerful capabilities to all of your lenses, including its two incredible telephoto lenses, providing three times and 10 times optical zoom. And for the true pros out there, Expert RAW, a multi-frame-based RAW format, provides even more flexible options. The Expert RAW app opens the camera system, giving you full control of your camera's lenses, as well as autofocus, ISO, EV, and white balance settings. And with access to all of that rich metadata, you can edit like a pro directly on your Galaxy S22 with Adobe Lightroom. And when you want to edit your footage on your tablet or your PC, the Galaxy ecosystem makes it easy. Samsung Gallery syncs across devices with OneDrive to provide a completely continuous experience. So if you want to edit some shots from your last vacation on your PC, just pull up the sync photo from your gallery and get to work. The Galaxy S22 Ultra will make every moment, the ones you capture with your camera and everything in between, more epic than ever before. And once you've captured those epic moments, share them. Our smartphone cameras have changed the way we create, view, and communicate. They let us express ourselves to the world, and there's no better global community than YouTube. YouTube gives everyone a voice and a place to share who they are. And smartphone cameras have been an essential part of that community. Today, we're delighted to welcome a special guest from YouTube. Hi, Drew and thank you for that gracious introduction. I'm Robert Kinsel, the Chief Business Officer of YouTube. On behalf of YouTube, I'm delighted to join you at Unpack today. At YouTube, our mission is to give everyone a voice and show them the world. Samsung and YouTube are great partners because we both recognize the power of technology to do just that. And it's our combined efforts that make our mission possible. Through technology, we both empower people around the world to create videos, connect with each other, and view this amazing content. Without doubt, one of the best ways to watch YouTube is on a Samsung device. We're grateful for our close partnership with Samsung, which is critical to delivering a best-in-class YouTube experience across Galaxy devices, including smartwatches, tablets, foldables, and smartphones like the new Galaxy S22. Together, we work to ensure the latest advanced phone from Samsung would deliver an unforgettable create and watch experience on YouTube. You can create short form mobile content through YouTube Shorts like never before. And our deep integrations with Google's communication apps help you share the fun with your favorite people. For example, if you send someone a YouTube video on messages, they can see a preview of the video right inside the conversation. And then you can actually watch the video together with live sharing on Google Duo. As part of our partnership with Samsung, we're also offering Samsung customers the exciting benefit of an extended free trial of YouTube Premium. With YouTube Premium, you can enjoy YouTube and YouTube Music ad-free in the background and also download the videos and music to enjoy offline. These are just some of the many ways that our collaboration brings the best creation and viewing experience to billions of people across the globe. We can't ask for a better partner than Samsung. I look forward to watching how we work even more closely to open new chapters for mobile video. And I can't wait to see where our partnership with Samsung takes us next. Thank you again for inviting me today and enjoy the rest of Unpacked. The Galaxy S22 Ultra brings you the most boundary-breaking innovations in the mobile industry. With the best Galaxy camera, an embedded S Pen, a 4 nanometer processor, and our brightest display ever, it sets a new standard for smartphones. Galaxy S22 Ultra will be available for pre-order starting today at $1,199. You can get even more color options exclusively at Samsung.com. Life has changed a lot in the past few years, and there have been dramatic shifts in how we work and play. We use technology for so much, and we all use it in our own unique ways. To do work, accomplish daily tasks, enjoy entertainment, and connect with our family, colleagues, and friends. Today, we're proud to introduce a new generation of tablets designed to break the rules of work and play. Introducing the Galaxy Tab S8 series. 
When that light hits the sky, it's not just a call. It's a warning. Maybe we're not so different after all. looks awesome. I can't wait to see the Batman in theaters. We're introducing three new additions to the Galaxy Tab S8 series, including a new incredible member of our lineup. We are bringing the power of Ultra to our tablets for the very first time with the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. The Tab S8 Ultra revolutionized the industry as we know it with its 14.6 inch Super AMOLED display. This display is clear and bright with up to 120 hertz refresh rate, which means stunning graphics and a smooth scrolling experience. Our engineers pushed the limits of innovation to build this powerful and expansive display into a slim form factor. They crafted a 6.3 millimeter bezel, so now you can enjoy the slimmest and largest display of any Galaxy Tab yet. I've been using the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra's large display to prepare for big presentations like this one. The large display lets me multitask without having to toggle between apps. You can even adjust the size and position of your app windows. The Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra's expansive display creates an immersive gaming experience, drawing you into the vivid landscapes of other worlds. And with one of our best video calling experiences yet, it will help you stay connected with your friends and colleagues. The Galaxy Tab S8 makes it super convenient to video chat. With dual cameras positioned on the long side of the tablet, I love that I can keep my tablet in landscape mode. Last weekend, when my friend was visiting me, she decided to join me on my call with my mom. Thanks to the Tab S8's ultra-wide lens, combined with innovative auto framing, both of us were always in the frame. And the powerful three-way microphone with AI technology made sure our voices could be heard clearly, even with background noise. We've partnered with Google to make your video calling experience more collaborative. With Google Duo's live sharing capability, you can easily brainstorm together, share ideas and images on Samsung Notes, watch videos on YouTube, or search for locations together on Google Maps. With this video calling experience, we're empowering you to connect with people, no matter where they are. And that's just the beginning. We are working closely with Google to bring more open experiences to our tablets, with more updates to come later this year. The Tab S8 series brings the digital and analog experiences together with the S Pen. Compared to the Galaxy Tab S7 series, we reduced S Pen latency by more than 30%. Combined with a display with up to 120 hertz refresh rate, your S Pen will glide smoothly as your ideas flow. Since its launch, Samsung Notes has been the original companion of the S Pen. And for over a decade, this app has continuously evolved to address the needs of our users and is now integrated with Microsoft OneNote, PowerPoint, and Outlook. Samsung Notes is one of our most beloved native apps with over 1 billion downloads on Google Play. Fans have told us about their favorite Samsung Notes experiences, including features that aren't so well known. So today, we're excited to share some of those with you. What do you do when inspiration strikes? We write, draw, dream, and imagine in our notes. From the original S Note to the Samsung Notes you know today, we've enhanced our app with every new generation, improving everything from writing and coloring and S Pen to text to screen off memos. And this year, we took your most recent feedback to introduce updates that better meet your needs. Display two pages side by side, annotate image files, and sync notes faster across devices. Inspired by something you see online? Just grab the site and add it directly to your Samsung Notes. 
No need to capture and scroll over and over. Now you can just scrapbook the entire site or simply pull in the link. Expand your creativity by using the expansive display of your Galaxy Tab as your canvas and your Galaxy Smartphone as a palette. This seamless interaction between Galaxy devices helps bring an analog feeling to your digital experience. And when you're working on a virtual group project, easily swap notes for convenient collaboration with one another. Then pull it all together. It's that swift and simple. Unleash your inner artist and let your imagination flow onto the screen. Samsung Notes can be your ultimate creative outlet. It's how I like it. Samsung Notes is made for you. So you can probably say, my notes, my way. You've just seen the amazing experiences that the S Pen and Samsung Notes bring to life. Whether you're working, playing, or creating, our open ecosystem of devices and partnerships elevates what a premium tablet experience can deliver. For artists, illustrators, and designers, we are leveling up our partnership with Clip Studio Paint to elevate your creative work using the S Pen. Your tablet is your canvas, and your S Pen is your paintbrush. Now you can use your smartphone as a palette, and we're excited to announce that we collaborated with LumaTouch to optimize LumaFusion for Samsung devices for the very first time. This popular top-ranked tool provides a desktop-like professional video editing experience the Galaxy Tab S8 series is equipped to record in 4K video with both the front and rear cameras. So everything you film will come out in stunning detail and definition. You can even use a Tab S8 to edit right away or sync videos captured on your Galaxy smartphone to your Tab S8 series using OneDrive and then edit them using LumaFusion. Personally, I'm a big multitasker, and that's why I love how my Tab S8 allows for a truly two-in-one experience. From the moment I attach my book cover keyboard, Samsung DeX unlocks so much potential, fully transforming my tablet into a PC-like experience. And that keyboard is not only super convenient, but protective, acting as a book cover to shield my tablet from damage. The Galaxy Tab S8 series also works seamlessly with Windows PCs. It's easy to connect with my laptop and use as a wireless monitor with a touchscreen capability of a tablet. The Galaxy Tab S8 series is more than just a tablet. It's an idea vault, a canvas for creativity, a video editing studio, and a productivity machine. All of this is supported by our most powerful chipset in a Galaxy Tab. It has a four nanometer processor, the first we've ever put in a tablet. And with up to 16 gigs of RAM, the Tab S8 Ultra will stay responsive and ultra fast. The Galaxy Tab S8 series comes with expandable storage, which means you can increase storage by up to one terabyte. It's hard to believe a tablet can be this powerful, but the Tab S8 Ultra is. See for yourself. Galaxy Tab S8 series helps you make the most of work, play, and everything in between. With our most powerful performance yet and our most expansive tablet display ever, this series will bring your biggest ideas to life. Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra will be available for $1,099, Tab S8 Plus for $899, and Tab S8 for $699. Pre-orders start today. And if you pre-order, you'll be able to experience the book cover keyboard on us. If you upgrade to a new Tab S8, you'll be able to easily transfer your content using SmartSwitch, 
whether you're moving from another Android tablet or even a different platform. This is what we mean by an open ecosystem. Here's Zach to tell you more. Thank you, Danielle. From our Galaxy smartphones to tablets to wearables, the Galaxy ecosystem is customizable, adaptive, and designed with you in mind. At Samsung, we're committed to delivering more open experiences across the Galaxy ecosystem to take your favorite products and services to the next level. That's why we partnered with Google to enrich our wearables experience, bringing Galaxy Watch 4 to the Wear OS platform. Together, we collaborated to optimize performance and to provide seamless access to apps on Google Play, including YouTube Music. You can download songs and even stream YouTube Music straight from your Galaxy Watch 4. That means you don't have to stop to pull out your phone when you're in the zone. Or you can even leave your phone behind if you have the Watch 4 LTE model. And we are excited to announce that you will soon be able to use Google Assistant right from your Galaxy Watch 4. We've also optimized the watch phone pairing experience. Before, you'd have to search your watch apps one by one to sync them with your phone. Now, apps in your Galaxy smartphone are installed in your Galaxy Watch 4 with just one tap. The Galaxy Watch 4 series is known for its advanced health experiences that empower you to become your best self. And today, we're elevating them even further. Your Galaxy Watch 4 now brings you tools that enhance your running and biking experiences. We collaborated with top-ranked apps like Adidas Running and Strava to update the Galaxy Watch 4 experience with more enhanced user interfaces to help you power through your exercise. Many of us know that when you're cycling, it can be hard to look down at your watch. With Watch Mobile interworking for cycling, Samsung Health captures and shows your Watch 4 data, like your heart rate or calories burned, on your phone's larger screen in real time. And when it's time to rest, the Galaxy Watch 4 can provide daily goals and coaching programs to help you achieve a healthy sleeping habit. By analyzing survey results, you can set your sleep style with Samsung Health and get personalized recommendations. I wear my Galaxy Watch 4 all the time, so it's important that it fits my style and mood of the day. Galaxy Watch 4 is our most customizable smart watch yet. And now, you're introducing new colors and patterns to our watch faces and straps. You can mix and match so you can coordinate your look your way. From more customization options to enhance your self-expression, to advanced features to put you in control of your health, we are so excited for these new updates to the Galaxy Watch 4. These updates are available today, and we can't wait to see what you do with these powerful new capabilities. We are also excited to introduce another enhanced experience that will expand your Galaxy ecosystem. Our all-new Samsung Wallet will carry your digital valuables in one convenient, secure place. You'll be able to store your IDs, credit cards, passwords, keys, and even your boarding passes. So you not only have to carry less, but you can access them anywhere. Samsung Wallet will also let you access and explore complex digital products like cryptocurrency with more ease too. But it's not all about convenience. Samsung Wallet has different levels and layers of security to protect your information. Combining our software solutions with our end-to-end -end hardware solution, Samsung Knox, Samsung Wallet will provide convenience and security. And all of this is just the beginning. We will continue to collaborate with our partners to enhance and expand Samsung Wallet. Everything we introduced today is part of the Galaxy experience, also known as One UI. And with One UI 4, we've made incredible improvements that will help you interact with your technology. Let's take a look. The Galaxy experience is designed for you, to be personalized by you. Wow. One UI 4 is now more intuitive, secure, and easier to use, with more effortless ways to customize your experience the way you want. The camera experience is amazing on the Galaxy S22. With One UI 4, you can easily capture your one-of-a-kind artistic vision. Just look at these photos. Check out the intuitive user experience. Go from photo to video to continuous video. Get creative with night shots, like this amazing light trail. And pro mode now works with each and every lens. 
Wow, schedule looks super packed this week. Thinking about manually adding all these events to your calendar? No need. One UI can pick out the important info and add it to your calendar like this. You're welcome. The app you were just using on your S22? Pick up where you left off on your Windows PC. Now that's seamless experience across platforms. One UI is now on Galaxy Tab 2. Have you seen it yet? Take a look, literally one look. Everything you're working on, all on one immersive screen. Whether you prefer to draw with the S Pen or type on the book cover keyboard, your work will flow smoothly. And with keyboard shortcuts, emojis are right at your fingertips. Like this. There's a whole wide world to explore with Galaxy. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it with the new and upgraded One UI 4. After all, it's your Galaxy, your way. An open ecosystem of products, services, and industry-leading partnerships working together to empower you and let you choose what works best for you. That's the Galaxy experience. Contrary to common misperception, openness and security can coexist. We give you the freedom to explore and tailor your own experience with total peace of mind, knowing you'll always be protected by the world's most trusted security platforms. Our top priority is and has always been to protect you and your privacy because we know you want full control over your personal data and expect trusted safeguards to protect your mobile experiences. We take this responsibility very seriously. We stand by three core principles when it comes to your privacy and security protection, transparency, and choice. We're committed to keeping your data safe at all times. We're constantly adding extra layers of protection to ensure your data is always safe. We will respect what you're willing to share or not and follow your lead. Our opt-out tracking on key apps gives you the choice to surf online without being traced. We live up to these principles and we will never waver on a promise because your trust means everything to us. We want you to be able to enjoy exciting new mobile experiences knowing we always have your back. So much of my life is on my phone and protecting my privacy is essential. Now the privacy dashboard shows at a glance which apps are accessing my data. So, I'm in control. I can hide my exact location from a weather app. Or share it with a ride-sharing app. But only when I need a car. Perfect timing. I can see which apps are using my camera and microphone. Who's having my mic this time? Sorry, guys. I have the power to choose who can access my personal data. And as always, Knox Security protects the rest. Your privacy, secured. Our relentless pursuit of innovation, our global scale, and our open collaborations enables Samsung to improve people's lives today and for future generations. Last August, we took an important step in our journey by announcing Galaxy for the Planet, our roadmap to minimizing our environmental impact in everything we do. Part of delivering on this commitment is to rethink the product lifecycle to find more sustainable ways to use technology, ways that foster a circular economy that we continuously reuse and recycle our planet's precious materials. Today, I'm proud to share what we're bringing you with the Galaxy S22 series. One of the biggest environmental threats to our planet is plastic pollution in our oceans. Roughly 12 million tons of plastic end up in the ocean every year. And there is 
one type of plastic that's especially dangerous to marine wildlife, fishing nets. Galaxy S22 is the first smartphone to incorporate repurposed fishing nets. In collaboration with industry experts, we've developed a way to recover fishing nets and repurpose them into necessary parts for our smartphones. In fact, we expect to remove more than 50 tons of old fishing nets from our oceans this year alone. We also enhanced other eco-conscious features of the Galaxy S22, including packaging made with 100% recycled paper. We'll continue to scale these efforts across our entire product lineup from tablets and buds to the Galaxy Book series and even accessories. Furthermore, we'll extend OS upgrades to four generations so you can continue to enjoy your Galaxy devices with the latest features even longer. And this is only the beginning. We'll continue to explore new ways to address environmental change and make a positive impact around the world. Together, we have the power to drive change. Protecting the planet is not a solo job nor a competition. We can all make small, sustainable choices every day and drive meaningful change. This is why the Galaxy brand exists, to open up endless possibilities in your daily lives and help you create meaningful connections. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe and see you next time. Hey everybody, we are back after Unpacked. We saw the new S22 line and new tablets. The event was also streamed in the metaverse. I'm Ayaz with Bridget and Lexi. Joining us right now is CNET's Russell Hawley, who attended the event in the metaverse. Russell, can you tell us what it was like to visit Samsung in the metaverse?
that's uh, you know like a Samsung event. Uh, and then while y'all were streaming the event while it was uh, starting, we we actually couldn't get into the venue to watch it uh, for another ten minutes. We ended up switching servers in order to get in to watch it. Uh, and then when you actually get in to, to watch the the presentation that everyone else was watching, it was uh, a a screen. Uh, kind of in the distance of a virtual theater uh, that was exactly what y'all were watching. There was nothing, I was kind of hoping that there would be like a way to play with the phones or, you know, kind of do something like that. And none of that existed. Uh, it was it was just a screen in a virtual theater. And that's that's the end. So you had a virtual line as if you were outside a virtual building and you couldn't get in virtually. This sounds like, we could, it actually it, sounds like reality. Why, why is that, do you think that was what they were going for? I, yeah, I mean, they really captured the Samsung event experience for sure. Like that's that is uh, that that you know, right down to the person wearing uh, wings that look like pot leaves. It really felt like I was in New York City, um, which was which was cool. Um, you know, it really felt like the actual space that they had built was more about playing this game, where you could go around and collect uh, hearts in order to unlock exclusive Samsung event clothing for your virtual avatar. Uh, you know, the the space that we were in had about 100 people that were in the Samsung event and only like, I guess, probably a third of them were watching the actual show as it was taking place. Uh, everyone else was running around playing this game. So it was unique. I'm reminded of when Samsung uh, allowed everyone to watch virtually in 2016, where they had like the 360 cameras and you could put on a VR headset and watch uh, and how much more it felt like I was participating in the event doing that than I was this. Russell, you were doing a great Twitter thread throughout the entire keynote. One of my favorite components though uh, had to be, I wonder if we can you know, navigate ourselves towards the last slice pizza store. Because you really, I really want to see, uh, show everybody at home watching what is in that pizza store because you know, having been to multiple events in the real world, as you've done, you know, there's always a sort of a food component somewhere. So they, I like how they've tried to recreate that in the metaverse, but but tell us a bit about the sorry state of that pizza store. Oh yeah, so there's a, the last slice pizza shop has uh, a sign as you enter that says that it is the best slice of pizza in the metaverse. Uh, and you look down at the slice of pizza that is present and it is just a black triangle. Like it's not, uh, it, it you barely would recognize it as pizza and uh, and it, you know the Samsung 837 store for those who don't know actually exists in New York City uh, where there are several very lovely pizza places nearby um, and so this is this is an odd representation of that uh, experience. Definitely seems so. I'm I'm actually disappointed that as you said there's no uh, hands-on experience with any of the devices in the metaverse because I think that would have been particularly interesting to see. Overall, do you think that this was a successful attempt uh, at representing a, a live event in the metaverse, or you know, it basically looks like Second Life to me. <laughs> This felt extremely like Second Life. This this didn't feel like it was new. It didn't feel particularly interesting. Samsung has a history of kind of chasing the zeitgeist and trying to like participate in pop culture. And this felt like a pretty significant miss, honestly. Bridget, do you have any questions for Russell in, in his adventures in the metaverse? Oh, I, I keep thinking, uh, what if they had you like travel into Bridgerton? Like, I don't know what that was about in the presentation. <laughs> or to travel to like, like what would a phone be like in other places? But, you know, I, I really appreciate your, your, your Twitter thread. I'll say that. <laughs> I'm going to let you know yeah, that there were a lot of opportunities also, that could have happened here, I think. Our, our producer is also trying to get into the, uh, into the metaverse right now but it keeps crashing so i mean this this is this is the reality as it stands that also probably means that a lot of people are trying to use this and try it out so if there's an event maybe people will show up and maybe that will create uh more improvements over time because if there's an audience you would you'd spend time in improving this location and as for that best slice of pizza in the metaverse it may be the best slice in the metaverse because i haven't seen any of the slices yet so russell you go keep finding other slices to compare this to please it's my new quest is to hunt for metaverse pizza slices all right, thank you, Russell Holly. Let's talk about what, what Samsung announced beyond. Um, well, actually, they didn't talk about pizza, but they did talk about something called the S22. And I'll say it pretty much was everything we thought it would be at this point. Uh, but it started off with some some weird partnerships. We started off with the the UN, which was pretty nice, talking about the uh, Samsung's global goals app, got the ultimate smartphone, all this stuff. Then there's this very strange Bridgerton crossover. I, I feel like I'm making this up. I, I, unless it was like a collective fever dream, I think we all saw that. There was this bizarre way to introduce the S22. 
I definitely appreciated the dig at Apple by saying, here's Lord Macintosh by showing off a raincoat. Look, I got waterproofing now. Look at you. And then eventually the S22 shows up with a bunch of portraits. Uh, specs are exactly what we thought. Uh, Lex, what did you think of the S22? Uh, S22, well, I, I really want to talk about the Ultra um, because I feel like the S22 and the Plus, uh, you know, are iterative upgrades. Um, the S22 Ultra, though, is, is sort of the one that I'm the most interested in. In terms of specs, as, as you said, nothing different to the leaks that we really saw. I think what's most interesting to me about this phone is that really the differentiating factor is only going to be the form factor, I think, this year. If we look at a lot of the main specs in terms of uh, you know, the internal specifically around the camera hardware, it's actually the same. I'm pretty sure it's almost exactly the same as the S21 Ultra. While I understand most people are not upgrading year on year, that's really something that's only left to, I guess, the, the hardcore tech geeks like myself. Um, I still, I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing. I think a lot of people might be looking at the specs going, well, it's really not that much different. In terms of the camera hardware specifically, I don't necessarily see this as an issue. There's a couple of different interesting software tweaks uh, in terms of HDR processing, uh, there's also improvements to portrait mode and, um, and some of the AI technology that's sort of talking about how it's going to be differentiating certain factors in uh, the image itself to make sure that areas are in focus rather than falling off into blur. Um, and of course, you know, the tweaks to night photography. I refuse to talk about the way Samsung marketed the night photography or low light photography. You all can mention that word if you want, but I refuse to use it as a photographer. Um, Anyway, moving on, uh, I think a lot of the camera features are going to be really exciting to see um, in practice. As I said, the hardware to me, um, I don't really mind that it is pretty similar to the S21 Ultra, mostly because the cameras on that phone, you know, are pretty, pretty good. So seeing some improvements to um, software functionality is exciting for me. Um, but overall, I think I'm... Um, Seeing this image now, I'm not as disappointed uh, in the fact that it looks like a note and the note is probably dead. I, I, I thought I was going to be more upset than I am, um, but alas, I think it might be actually okay. Crossing my fingers, Bridget, I, I know that we were discussing this in the pre-show. You say, move on, it's time to move on. And I think maybe, maybe it's time. Maybe it is time. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that because I, 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 I enjoy uh, a cleaner slate of, of products. Um, my, my thing that uh, I took away from it, um, I don't know why it caught me so much vision booster. Um, the whole, the whole thing about not just having like more brightness, but uh, being uh, adaptive uh, to where it's more bright, uh, depending on your environment. I just kept thinking, Ooh, I want that in all my tech. Like, like I can work better in the sunlight. I like to see how that how that is in person. Yeah. So the the S twenty two Ultra, which we're talking about right now, because the S twenty two and the S twenty two Plus, yeah, been there, done that. The S twenty two Ultra, obviously, looking a lot like the Note when they introduced it. It started off with like almost a transformer noise, like ch -ch -ch -ch, as if the Note was changing into the S, which I freaking loved because I'm like, that's silly and dumb. And I love it. As for what we're just talking about, the vision booster stuff, it's about the way the display reacts to sunlight because this phone can get really, really bright. I believe the, the amount was 1750, 1,750 nits, which is very, very bright for a phone. And it's not just going to be a bright image just blaring out at you when you have sunlight. The phone is supposed to be able to take into account the light around it to determine how to show you the image. So you would have a more accurate image to what you would normally see on a phone instead of just being blasted out and all the, the darks aren't dark, you'd actually have an image that looks like the way it's supposed to look like. These kinds of things, I think, were really important in this because even in that Bridgerton bit, when the queen's like, I don't know what that means, when she was talking, somebody was talking about night photography or nightography, as Lex refuses to call it. It's I'm like, it's not it about, I'm not it's looking, like it's, Voldemort, it's, it's, you can't say it. It's not like it's like fetch. I don't think it's like Voldemort. Uh, but it's just fetch. It ain't gonna happen. Okay, but whatever. But that the fact that Samsung's talking about features more so than uh, a lot of other things, I thought that was a nice nod to consumers. Russell, maybe maybe you can help me out with this. They did spend a lot of time on heat transfer tech. They showed all of the structure. They spent like it looked like minutes and minutes talking about how this S twenty two has optimized heat dissipation. Uh, I'm thinking this has something to do with the Note 7, but maybe I'm wrong. Russell, what did you think? 
this was a weirdly technical part of the the show. Like for for a Samsung event to spend this much time specifically calling out, we call it the VC for vapor chamber and like what what the PCB size looks like and like it was a weirdly technical part of the show to basically say we we handle heat much better now, which thought uh, for a moment might actually be in response because it happened after uh, in response to the brightness of of the screen, you know, because obviously, you know, making the screen brighter is going to generate a fair amount of heat on its own. Uh, and, and phones tend to get warmer in sunlight anyway, because uh, physics exist. Uh, so I, I thought that maybe it was in response to that less than the the seven, but you you could be right. I like your, your physics discussion there. That is true. Uh, phones do get a tendency to get hot, especially in the sunlight. L Lex, what did you think about all the time spent on the vision booster and the heat dissipation? Uh, I, I, so I am I'm a geek. I enjoy watching um, how you know things are made internally. Um, I, I, the one thing I did want to sort of mention is we didn't hear any mention of specifically of the Qualcomm Snapdragon name. And to me, this was particularly interesting. Um, I feel like the, there was a lot of emphasis on it's using a four nanometer processor. And, and yes, it's the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 inside or Exynos, depending on where you are in the world region wise. Uh, but, but Samsung didn't make any kind of deal about the, the Qualcomm um, name in the keynote as, at all, which was interesting. So, so spending a lot of time on talking about heat dissipation, about 1750 nit screen, uh, and and vision booster technology is really interesting because these are all kind of trying to emphasize Samsung's proprietary way of doing things and, and developing its own kind of tech or, or kind of framing it like that in the presentation. Um, and I, I just found it really, really intriguing how the kind of other branded names like like Snapdragon were, were kind of not, not mentioned, don't mention it um, at all. So I thought it was uh, kind of interesting because I think we might be seeing Samsung placing a lot more emphasis on uh, its own naming conventions, its own processor tech as well um, over the coming, I guess, the coming few releases of phones that we're going to see. Yeah, prior to this event, there were rumors that Samsung's phones, the S22 line, would use all Qualcomm uh, processors, sorry, systems on a chip. But then that rumor changed. Obviously, there'd be different processors based on the location of the device where you get it. Exynos, obviously the rest of the world, US usually gets Qualcomm. They did have one graphic in the in the tab, in the tablet section, but they actually had the word Qualcomm on there, but they still wouldn't, they wouldn't name it. Now, maybe it's because Samsung talked about its great partnerships with Microsoft and YouTube and the UN. They're like, look, Qualcomm ain't paying us anything. We're not mentioning them by name. We're paying them up the wazoo. We're not doing it. So I don't know what's going on there. That's a pure speculation. Maybe that's why they're like, we're not talking about you or they just didn't even know what they were going to have on the day. They're like, do we know if we're going to have Qualcomm? I don't know. Are we going to have our own Exynos? I don't know, because there's obviously a global shortage of chips. So who knows? Maybe they didn't even know at the time of presenting what they would have. Like, just put something up back there. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the cameras, because we talked about the photography. There was this really cool feature that on the, Alt on the 22 Ultra that automatically changes frame rates in response to different lighting. Now. This I thought was a really interesting idea because Samsung also says that the Ultra can synthesize frames. So if you're taking video in low light and you're moving around, maybe like there's a merry-go-round behind you and it's night, obviously there's different lighting patterns. The phone will figure out how to shoot it so there's more light coming into the lens. I thought that seemed like a really cool thing. Lex, I'm curious what you think about this because I'm sure I want to see you test this because I want to see, is this a bunch of, of, of just bragging are they actually do they have this or is it something that needs a lot of work it's it's something i'm really curious about in terms of low light video automatically adjusting the frame rate depending on the light that's that's in coming into it i think i'm fairly sure the iphone currently does that um, when it comes to low light video recording it will switch the frame rate from say if you're in 30 or 60 frames a second it will automatically reduce to say like a 24 frames just to kind of compensate for the the lower light situation um, without getting too technical, basically, if you lower the frame rate, you're essentially going to help uh, gather more light, help the sensor gather more light, along with the rest of your exposure parameters. So I wasn't super interested in in the video component of it because, to me, that's not necessarily the new technology. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to testing it out because, as you might be familiar with, video um, on on the the Samsung side has it's it's got great in terms of resolution 8k 24 frames a second like crazy uh 4k 60 um you know it looks really good but when it comes to lower light video samsung phones haven't necessarily been the top performers 
So uh, I am looking forward to testing that out. In particular though, the, the, the one thing that's interesting to me is using that 108 megapixel sensor for still images, um, pixel binning is a technology that basically uh, consolidates the data from multiple pixels down into one to create a more detailed image with uh, more vibrancy and uh, makes a smaller file size at 12 megapixels, which is way more manageable. But the S22 Ultra is now basically merging the high resolution 108 megapixel image and a pixel binned image from the 12 megapixels, merging those two together, smushing them, doing some magic, and then coming out with a high resolution image at 108 megapixels that is going to contain as much detail as possible. Um, so this is really, really interesting technology. I'm excited to sort of test this alongside uh, the 108 megapixels, say, from the S21 Ultra, without that kind of merging pixel binning technology um, on, you know, in making that multiple merged exposure frame. So I think, to me, that's the more interesting part. Who's using 108 megapixel images, though? That's the real question. Uh, I don't know if Bridget, Russell, Ayaz, I any of you have been taken high res images at 108 megapixels. I think I do it just to test the cameras and then I go straight back to 12 megapixels because I ain't got the storage space. I just yeah, don't. you talk about storage. I want to hit upon that thing because none of these devices, none of the S22s, including the Ultra, none of them have expandable storage. The S22 can be equipped with up to a terabyte. They're like, here's all this ways to shoot amazing stuff. You can shoot 8K with it. You can shoot uh, 108 megapixel images. You can shoot in their expert raw format. You can do all of that, but you're stuck at a terabyte. They did talk about moving your stuff using OneDrive, but I found that to be, as a note user, as a power user, like, why? Why do, well, don't, don't limit me if you have all of these features. Now, I know you're like, who's, who's using up a terabyte on their phone? This guy is using up a terabyte on his phone because I like to keep everything on there because there's cloud backup and there's all that other stuff. But it's something, there's something really great about having that stuff on device at full quality and you don't lose anything and a transfer, nothing is lost. A little bummed about that. Uh, Bridget, are you using like terabytes of space with your phones? Uh, sadly, uh, well, I, I have an iPhone and, uh, uh, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, oh, I got to get the most expensive one. Otherwise it's going to keep bothering me that I'm out of space. So yeah, it's just annoying, you know, to ever have to deal with this stuff, but no, I'm not going all the way maxed out. <laughs> I don't know. I think terabytes are important. Uh, Russell, what, what do you think of this storage bonanza? I mean, it, you know, a lot of this stuff, I don't think anyone's going to be taking 104 megapixel photos and then keeping them. Uh, I, I think they're going to do exactly what Lexi suggested is, you know, they're going to test it and be like, okay, cool. And they're going to move on to whatever gets them the best image. And the best image is going to be this weird combination of, of you know, kind of uh, hybrid images that are going to result in what's essentially a 12 megapixel image at the end of the day anyway. So I, the, the video could be interesting. But if uh, Samsung software holds up to the, the same standard that it usually does, in order to get that AK, you're probably going to have to turn it on manually. And I, I, don't, I doubt most users are going to do that anyway. So it's, it's tough. I think power users will likely run into a storage problem in about three months, uh, but the rest of the, the users probably won't notice. Yeah, the other thing is when you bump it up to 8K, you sometimes you lose some of the digital image stabilization. Mm -hmm. At least that happened on the older phones. I don't think Samsung talked about that particularly with this one, uh, because you if to run this to make this happen, usually it, there's a grind happening in the machine. Now all these devices, the price is is not so bad. The S22 starts at 7.99. The S22 Plus, I want to say, was 8.99, and the Ultra is 11.99. So the pricing didn't go wild or anything it seems about on par with last year so that's pretty impressive considering the whole you know global thing that's going on right now being able to access that and then we got the tablets the galaxy tab s8 series um we start with batman of all things the batman now i can't tell if the batman is going to feature samsung galaxy products in the movie or these are just a series of ads there has been a samsung s series phone that did have a I believe a Dark Knight crossover where you can get a special phone with the Dark Knight logo on the back of a special Batman edition. I don't know what to make of this whatsoever. Bridget, why is the Batman and Samsung Galaxy ecosystems uh, a thing? Riddle me this. Um, uh, <laughs> this is... Uh, this is uh... <laughs> that was pretty good. Oh, that was excellent. No. Well, don't you want to be dark and mysterious and take your detective notes. 
with you a cool stylus. Um, <laughs> I, I, that would be something if it had product placement. Uh, good call out, by the way, on that old uh, uh, phone. I forgot about the Batman phone. Um, I, I found uh, not so much. <laughs> I, I, I always laugh when they do tie-ins like this. I mean, Samsung's always about the movie tie-ins. I mean, think about way back in the day. They used to put the whole entire Avatar movie on their original like S2 or whatever it was, you know? So yeah, and I watched Avatar for the first time that way. I, I didn't see it in theaters. Um, uh, I, I still hear about that from my husband. Uh, but nevertheless, um, uh, I was really um, kind of, I found this a refreshing tablet because this was not Samsung taking on the iPad. This was Samsung saying, uh, buy us instead of the Surface. Um, putting that camera on the side was something that um, hit home to me because uh, a little backstory, I've been uh, testing um, some, um, I guess, video chatting with the kids and the grandparents and uh, uh, my parents had uh, a Samsung that they were borrowing to, and, and, and you know what it looks like when uh, grandparents are trying to hold something horizontally and do a video chat, it's it, it, it's half a face because the phone, the, the, the camera's always on one side. They're like, hi, honey, hi. Yeah, no, finally put the camera horizontally in the center, just like a laptop. And how sweet was it that they said they're gonna throw in the keyboard that was a big burn to everyone else it always makes you pay extra for a keyboard cover i think it was for pre-orders i got to check what the with the you know asterisk there is but um i i found that i was like okay all right you know a little a little something different is is good yeah, I was staring at this and I heard that the YouTube chat was not happy about that notch. While it does have the camera on the landscape edge, for some reason on this 14.6 inch Super AMOLED display, Samsung decided to put a notch in the middle. Um, I could see that being an issue for some people. I don't really care because you could probably black that out and still have a giant screen. It's still a 14.6 inch device. Lexi, do you think the notch situation is overblown or do you not want to see a divot in people's heads? Uh, well, when you put it like that, how could you ever vote for putting divots in anybody's head? Like, <laughs> um, I, I'm very much team no notch, um, as we've discussed many a time. Um, if anybody watching at home has watched us on on uh, an Apple live show, you'll know that I am um, anti notch uh, until the cows come home, essentially. However, I am very much excited, as Bridget mentioned, about the positioning of this camera. Um, but but also more importantly was just how proficient this tablet really looked in terms of the demos that we saw. I mean, of course they're all staged, but more exciting to me was finally I feel like Samsung might be fulfilling its long promise of all of its devices working really seamlessly together. So we saw the examples of being able to use the tablet as kind of the second screen to potentially your phone or laptop integration with tablets, uh, sorry, earbuds being able to switch seamlessly between devices. Samsung has had that for a while, as long as your devices were signed into the same Galaxy account. But in my testing, it's never really been particularly seamless. It would work, say, maybe 60% of the time when I was trying to switch devices between uh, having Galaxy Buds in and then moving between two different phones signed into the same account, for example. So I'm really hoping that this, this tablet and this whole new approach is really going to start bringing everything uh, into one and making sure that if you have multiple Galaxy devices, multiple Samsung devices, they are going to talk to each other uh, as seamlessly as, say, another ecosystem might. So that, to me, is the most exciting part about the tablets. And the fact that they look really nice, too expensive for me, but uh, I kind of want one now. <laughs> Yeah, one, one of the things about the pricing, yeah, it definitely seems expensive, especially for the 14.6 inch device. Uh, but Samsung basically saying, they actually did say this, that they were going to continue supporting these devices for four cycles of Android. That I think, there was, they put that in their environmental section. The idea is you don't have to keep getting rid of your device. I think it actually gives people a motiv motivation to buy a Samsung tablet knowing, hey, look, I got four years on this thing. iPads are supported for, it seems like, five to seven years that's a long time so when you invest in one of those products you know you're going to get updates over and over again that device is not going to die on you you're not going to have security issues that's going to run as fast as it can for many years then you have samsung stepping up because this used to be this is a huge problem with the android devices in general they're stepping way up saying look four android cycles you're going to get updates that way i believe that's os updates security updates might be a little longer maybe five years 
that says, hey, go with us. Our stuff's going to work together, and they're going to work for a long time. Russell, what did you think about Samsung's commitment to continuing its updates? I mean, first of all, I think it's wild that we are impressed that a step up is still three years behind what Apple is doing. Um, and that's that's a, a thing worth keeping in mind. It is still a really good thing. Samsung has uh, has done much better with updates over the last couple of years, uh, just kind of generally, uh, not just with its uh, kind of annual cycles to, to update phones, but also security updates on a regular basis uh, and, and you know, kind of feature additions to, to things that are not just things inside of the Galaxy store, which is a thing that we used to have issues with. Um, so yeah, I, I think this is a, another kind of uh, intentional push forward. Uh, and, you know, the, the cool thing about uh, chip shortages and, and kind of processor uh, cycle slowdowns um, is that it, it will actually be easier to maintain those for a while because they know for a fact that those are the processors that people are going to be stuck with for more than one generation. Well, there was a lot more on this. There was environmental discussions. There's talking about uh, recycling of fishing nets and making them into integral parts of Samsung devices, trying to pull, I believe, 50 tons out of the ocean. I don't know what that is as a percentage. 50 tons sounds like a lot, but if there's like 200,000 like, tons, that's a problem. Uh, we'll see how that goes. So it's not just the idea with the UN partnership at the beginning, oh, you as a consumer could do something. Samsung really trying to commit to this idea, hey, look, the environment's important. We're a giant company. We can do something about this. Our devices are going to be around for a while. They're going to be made with products that are recycled. The packaging is supposed to be recycled when it comes to the S22 devices that's supposed to branch accessories and tablets over time. This, this was, there was a lot of information. Back to the tablet real quick. Samsung just talked about the Ultra, and then they're like, oh, there's two others. They didn't bother <laughs> talking about them, which I think gives you an idea of what they think about them or what the consumers think about it. And there was a little bit more about the ecosystem. I just want to go around the horn, do some final thoughts. Lexi, uh, if of anything we've mentioned or not mentioned, what do you want to discuss? Uh, the updates to the Galaxy Watch 4 were kind of sort of thrown in at the end of the presentation. I think this stuff was actually announced a couple of days ago, I think Monday. Monday evening. Um, so you're getting a couple updates to the watch for finally the most important one that you need to care about. There's a bunch of other things, but most importantly is Google Assistant is finally coming to the Galaxy Watch 4 Yay. and Watch 4 Classic. Thank goodness we will soon be able to banish Bixby to the doldrums and so we never have to touch Bixby again. Um, of course, this is the watch that's running the new Wear OS co-design between Google and Samsung. It's now going to have streaming over Wi-Fi and LTE if you're using YouTube Music. Uh, it's going to be able to show you details about your workout on the phone, sync that, say, if you're on a bike, you'll be able to see all those stats right in front and center, uh, synced from the watch on your wrist to the big, bigger display on your phone, say, on your handlebars. Um, but most importantly is uh, better sleep tracking is supposedly going to allow for something called sleep animals. Sleep animals, yes. It's literally rating your sleep quality and giving you... Uh, anything from unconcerned lion to sensitive hedgehog, nervous penguin, or exhausted shark. I'm not making these up. These are actually real things. That's all I wanted to talk about. And I think I'll just leave it there. I'm just going to pass it to Bridget for her final thoughts. No llamas? Um, uh, well, I, <laughs> I love that we ended on saving the turtles. That's cool. Because you know what? It actually takes a lot of effort to be able to make uh, uh, pieces of a phone uh, out of ocean plastic and stuff. So I hope to see more of that from other tech companies, Apple. <laughs> Russell, do you have any final thoughts on the S22 unpacked event? Metaverse. Yeah, so what... When I'm uh, when I'm not being disappointed by the metaverse, I'm an I'm an avid cycler, and uh, um, seeing the the new features there, in particular, you know, being able to see the data on both your watch and the phone at the same time, and some of the the kind of enhanced health features that are that are coming along with that are are personally very exciting. So I, I'm glad that Samsung is continuing that push and competition against Apple. Yeah, I'm excited for these phones. I've got a Note 20. I'm looking to upgrade one day, one day in the future. And I'm looking forward to all the reviews we'll have at CNET because every single, like, pretty much any product that they talked about, we're going to put them to the test, see if they live up to Samsung's claims because Samsung says, these are amazing. And so does every, every company. And that's what we are here to do is make sure that we are helping you out to see, does this stuff live up to the claims? So I'm looking forward to seeing the reviews of the S22 line on CNET. That does it for us at CNET. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you got questions or comments, you can always let us know on Twitter or in the comments. If you're watching us on YouTube now, hit that subscribe button, notification, all that fun stuff. You can watch more CNET news, reviews, tips, all that fun stuff. Thanks to everybody that's been helping. You got Stephen, Bonnie, Amy, Justin, Lexi, Bridget, 
uh, me? I don't know. I forgot anyway. And you for watching. So that is for us. And we'll see you next time.